Bitcoin 2024 having will be its most important. This is coming from an interview with Charles Edwards. We're not going to go into the interview. We're going to talk about the premise. The Bitcoin commentator and fund manager reveals why 2023 is the start of the new regime for Bit BTC price action and institutional involvement. Bitcoin stands at the start of a new regime after its early 2023 price gains and next year will prove pivotal. That is the opinion of Charles Edwards, founder of Quantitative Bitcoin and Digital Asset Fund Caprioli Investments. As investment behavior around Bitcoin recovers and aligns with network fundamentals and price action, Edwards, perhaps like many other institutional professionals, is gearing up for an explosive period of growth. The jury may still be out on whether the bottom is in for Bitcoin's price, but long-term investors, the time to allocate is just the beginning, he argues, or for long-term investors. In an extensive interview with Cointelegraph, Edwards reflects on the prospects for Bitcoin and the crypto industry in the coming years and whether the 2023 rebound has legs. Looking ahead, next year's block subsidy having will be especially important as bitcoin becomes in his words the hardest asset in the world with certainty now you guys can go read the entire interview here but they're, they're kind of it's a little misleading as far as kind of marking 2023's rebound is the effectual thing here as if you read the interview it really does talk more about the 2024 having and how much of an impact that will have as we've seen in for the past 12 years the having a bitcoin does in fact impact impact the price it, it typically has every single time caused the price of crypto of bitcoin and at bringing you know tide high tide brings up all ships like bits was just mm -hmm. saying brings up the rest of the crypto market usually takes about six months for it to start to really take off and then for about a year after that you hit the peak usually at, what i've been looking at it's every it's it's a year and a half hit is where you hit the top of bitcoin after ever having but what is undeniable is that the having has an impact on the price of bitcoin it goes up from wherever its starting point was right um and i think the big question really here is how much more adoption does that drive for Bitcoin in this in this next run, right? Because we're kind mm -hmm. of getting to the point to where mainstream's fully aware of this. And a lot of the mainstream had their first cycle come to Jesus meeting this past cycle, right? So what happens mm -hmm. when they see, oh, this pattern is a thing and it's happening again? How, how euphoric does it go at that point? Yeah, I mean, uh, halvings are always interesting events. Um, the the amazing thing about halvings is that it's super mechanical. One day, it's uh, you're getting six point two five, and after the halving, you're getting three point one two five. So there is an absolute mechanical thing that happens with yield. So as a miner, you know you're you're essentially getting half that next day, right? If your luck and everything still pans out, right? So. Um, it's typically um, what's happened over time is sometimes they start to front run looking like it's going to be priced in and then it usually does dump as people try to, you know, shake the market a little bit. I look at it right now. If Bitcoin, like as a miner, uh, and you look at $24,000 Bitcoin price and we know what the difficulty is right now and what our yield is. Mm -hmm. If Bitcoin at the time of the halvings at 50 k or, you know, doubles from where it's at price wise, and let's say difficulty goes up, you know, another 15, 20%. Um, you know, we might make 15, 20% less yield right now. When the halving happens, we're essentially back where we're at right now. Like it, if price doubles from where it's at, we're essentially making the same, you know, uh, amount by USD, but a lot less yield, mm -hmm. right? Um, so why the USD calculation matters, obviously, is you're paying your expenses. You're, you're trying to figure out, is right. your operation take an impact? What's it have to be? So uh, from a minor standpoint, you're kind of looking at what's it have to be for me to maintain operations, to understand on how we're going to handle it, um, and prepare to be able to go a few months maybe in the negative or in the red, um, or part, you know, look at whatever agreement you have and park it like for our particular situation we have to hold, maintain 1.5 megawatts out of five so our you know lever is 
what's 1.5 megawatts need to make, <laughs> you know, like in a worst case. So you got to build those out and your risk, especially if you have like a business, your business is around it. Right. But if you're personally, you're kind of looking at like what, what could this really happen with like price and the way it usually goes up um, after those. And Established in 2017, OctoMiner is an international mining hardware company. They manufacture and engineer the best mining equipment in the industry and supply rigs to some of the largest mining farms around the world. Their GPU mining rigs also integrate with the top crypto operating systems like HiveOS, MinerStat, and Simple Mining. All parts come with an international one-year warranty. Exciting news! They will be adding ASIC miners for sale to their website soon and launching a new product built specifically for ASIC home miners. Please visit octominer.com or email support at octominer.com for questions. You know, I, I think it all comes back down to uh, I like looking at what are the services, what's growing in this space, who's going to on ramp. Uh, new services is Fidelity Capital finally going to release the fact when I can log into my Fidelity account and I can go from stock straight to Bitcoin in mm -hmm. Fidelity because uh, you have a lot of capital. Um, I think that's one of the biggest, largest events, at least in the, the U.S. that are going to occur is the moment that people can take already vested capital. So it's capital that, that's not coming directly out of your pocket right now in your earned income, mm -hmm. but it is investment capital that you can easily swap without moving out of that exchange, out of Fidelity or whatever 401k that you're using. And you can go, I want to do a 5% allocation in crypto, mm -hmm. a market basket, whatever. Because now you're taking something that's already there and you're just changing the mix, right? Right. Um, so it's a lot easier for people. And as once that word gets out and people start to see that lift, they're like, wait a minute here. Once they start showing that crypto indices versus your market indices, I think things will happen. So it's, what I'm trying to say with that is the functionality of new services come on unbeknownst to everybody else end up causing that lift has nothing necessarily to do with the having. It might be tied to the having, yeah. but the scarcity of the having create the demand curve on as more people kind of get in there because now there's less on the market that's being sold and it's just a mechanical thing that happens from a scarcity side. But I think the feature side of being able to have more options in areas that don't require people to just put more money in directly, but transfer money that is in an institution of some sort to those markets, the feature of that having that function, uh, that functionality, I think is going to be the largest driver that happens to coincide around the same time as the having. You know, when we were out yeah. there at CES this year, talking to Fidelity Capital that's there, they, you know, they had a whole booth and it's like they're working hard regulatory wise, right. To try to get that to where you can go into your existing 401k. And if you are a person that wants to diversify 5% in, you can, and like uh, it is still custodial, not your keys, not your coins. I understand. Um, but maybe uh, that is the trigger that then gets people more interested in and try to acquire not in that way, but you know, through, can I mine it? Can I buy it from another exchange and move it into my own wallet? That kind of thing. So I think those type of events are going to occur within this cycle before the having, mm -hmm. and we'll have that well, run up probably just before it. And then it's just going to like, Oh, the having yeah. happened and now Bitcoin went up. It's like, well, in the, in the know, features came online too, right? <laughs> in the agricultural revolution, everybody didn't stop hunting and gathering, right? Like, Sure, that eventually phased out more and more hunters and something became more dominant. But like, I look at it the same way, like uh, not your keys, not your crypto kind of like not everybody's going to understand that. And and mm -hmm. as it gets more adopted and they and the incentive is there for people to self custody, then they'll then they'll mm -hmm. move into that realm. Right. And so uh, it's always it's kind of like, you know, we're we're just we're in this weird kind of transitional phase and and it's going to be mm -hmm. like that for a while i think it's going to be like that for quite a long time i think like i don't think it's going to mm -hmm. just change overnight there are some things that can make it change overnight like a collapse of the u.s dollar sure but mm -hmm. you know whether or not that happens is out of my control so i'm not going to worry about it <laughs> yeah i mean so those are a lot bigger uh, uh issues um i mean let's put it this way there's a lot of 
the U.S. government has a lot of incentive to not have that happen. Mm -hmm. uh, and they might get to a point to where there's not much they can do about it. That's a different issue. But right. like, um, I think that there's different triggers that are trying to be used. And it, it all takes into consideration of the existing economy structure the way it is now and doesn't take in the fact of certain elements that that I think over time are running in parallel paths. I look at like a Gantt chart, right? And there's certain things that we're all looking at. It's kind of the critical path, like mm -hmm. markets going to crap, dollar could go away, all this stuff. But there's other paths that are happening in parallel. Innovation and artificial intelligence, we still have no, I mean, we see what GPT is doing, but like what, um, what other major leap advancements that now change the way things are that maybe drop cost considerably and then just change the whole dynamic. Like it's like overnight, I'm not saying it's overnight, but things could change to a way where it's like a couple companies get major advancements to where, well, now our eggs cost like 10 cents because like we can have this fully automated and it happens really quick. Right. So there's things that happen that start to change dynamics that were kind of left field and we mm -hmm. didn't even realize. Um, and then there's other aspects of discovery um, innovation that we didn't even know occurred. Uh, I mean, just, I did a, read an article, you know, not too long ago about Valadium, which is uh, a um, a much more powerful material to make batteries with. Okay. And there's, if you just look it up, it, it's like there's a lot of research on it, but they're just at that kind of forefront where it's it, it's not flammable. It stores battery, you know, juice a lot, okay. a lot uh, more longer. It uh, is an easier process. Like there's like, like where this, where was this all our life, right? So it's like things that overnight could start to change the dynamic of things. And now there's an, you know, like a industrial revolution of technology stack that now kind of offsets, like we have a lot of debt, but now we can burn it down in a different way. I look at the positive, like there's a momentum to try to figure out a better way. I think Bitcoin's a better way for money. I think crypto in general is, you know, the from the people and the participants is a better way. That's going to be foundational to structure and like money. There's other innovations that I think are going to help buy down debt differently. Um, and then as long as we don't push, you know, Pookie or anybody to certain nucleus, <laughs> right? I think it's we're in a in a uh, in a glide path that there's innovators out there that are just like, no, I don't accept this year of reality. I want to make a better reality. Right. And I kind of align myself more to those folks of like. Yeah, man, I hear the media and all that. Dude, I ain't got time for that. Like, I'm moving forward, and we're going to make a better thing. Yeah. And I, I well, think that always wins over time. Um, and, you know. You're, you're either, yeah, if you're, if you're too focused on, on the negative, you're never going to find the positive. That's, I mean, that's pretty much yeah. how it goes down as far as yep. that's concerned. So I definitely agree with you. And I, th I think we move, I think we move. You, you either go all in on a positive direction or, or what the rest of the world says no. And you just, whatever, you're still at the same point. It's not like anything changed, mm -hmm. right? Either things get better yeah. or they just stay where they were as they were expected. Uh, I don't think yep. that there's much to worry about there. Thanks for checking out this clip from the crypto mining show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals, page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.